Hey guys! <laughs> Gigi over here dying, but don't worry, she's gonna come back soon. Hey everyone, <laughs> we're here with Verified by God. Yes, and we forgot to tell you guys <laughs> the name of the podcast, why it was chosen, yeah, and things like that. Do you want me to tell them? Okay. So I went to my sister's and I was like, I feel like um, I prayed to God. I'm like, okay, I always pray like for a name. I'm like, God, so what do you, you want this podcast, but what do you want it to be called? Because I had my own podcast called Air Hustlers. And I was like, that's old news. Like we need new wineskins. We doing things new. We're not bringing things from the back, like from the past to the present. And at this time, God was showing me a lot of worldly things, like especially the, uh, the verified check yeah, mark. See, everybody was getting verified. People yes. Was the $10, 12 or however much it was. To, right. Just to be verified. So on social media, at first, you got it if you were a celebrity or if you mm -hmm. had a high status, right? But now they made it where you can, like Gigi just said, pay for it. So I was like, I see all these pastors and things like that that paid for it now. And I was like, God, I really came to him like, God, they're doing this for the world. Like, that's a worldly thing. Why is that an importance? Like, and God said, no, actually, bring it back. That was not why. So what? God revealed to me who my husband was. Oh, and yeah. um, yes, that's a whole nother video, though. We're not going to get into that. But God revealed to me to my husband was, and I was acting very worldly. I was like, but God, he's verified. He, he got a check mark. He's a public figure. And God was like, but you're verified by me. And so I told yeah. my sisters, I said, I believe this should be called verified by God. And I was like, that's perfect because, yes. you know, everybody wants to be verified. And like with us, accepted we're like, by the world. Yeah, we're like, we just need to be accepted by God. We need just need to be verified by God. So I'm like, that's perfect. Yo, we, we was like, we could rock with that. We don't need to pay for no check. Like God, <laughs> God got a check in heaven. Verified us. Listen, okay. <laughs> yeah. And that also goes to show, like, I don't know how you, if you had this going on when you first started your walk in Christ, where people would be throwing shade, like. Who does she think she is? Like, yeah. do you, can you quote scripture, but do you serve? Do you can do you this? Can you speak in tongues? Can you speak in <laughs> tongues? Girl, that's a whole nother video. But like, they were trying to verify if we were called by God. Like, is that really, like when I was um, early in my walk, I would get like, <clears throat> the Holy Spirit would be telling me to tell certain people certain things. And of course you should always test the spirit. Yeah. But people wasn't used to me being like that so they would be like how you how did you hear that from god like you sure that that was god like i'm like listen look I, <laughs> I do that all the time i went to this church once in dallas in a worldly church that a lot of people go to they have several campuses and i remember him saying be wary of those people who say they hear from god and i was like First of all, like I was scrutinizing the whole service and I even went to one service on New Year's and he was quenching the spirit. The pastor was quenching what? the spirit of the church. They would play that music where, you know, you get the Holy Ghost and everything like that. He was uh-uh, not in this church. We got a schedule to adhere to. And I was like, what? If you go to a church like that, get out. Find, a, find another church. Like yeah. the movie, get out, get out. Okay. Right. Get out of that church. Yeah. The Holy Spirit is clearly not moving in a church that's so yeah. pressed on time. And that's what I'm getting right now is a lot yeah. of you have the capacity of receiving really good gifts from God, but you're in an environment that's holding you back. That's suppressing. That's quenching the spirit mm -hmm. from flowing through you. So yeah. you need to move. It's time to elevate. Yeah. And not um, religiously. <laughs> Spiritually. Right. Spiritually. So that brings us to the topic for today, um, taking on other people's anxieties. Ooh. I know a lot of y'all can relate to that. Yes. Because, look, listen. Have you, do you take on other people? Well, we're like, em, em, like empath. We can feel. Because yeah, we're we prophetic. We yeah. feel. We feel. We were just talking about the other day how we feel when God is not happy, when he's sad in his mm -hmm. sorrow. So we could definitely feel on that. Um, so like, I would say there's negatives and positives to taking on people's anxieties. Yeah, but like, if you know that you have that gift, 
and you have to know the the capacity that you have to to take on like how much mm. you can take on because right. you don't want it to drown you trying to take on other people's um anxieties right. or worries but i mean you know some of you may have the gift of healing the gift of you know calming a person down but you have to check yourself first and you have to recognize whether it's a spirit that's trying to enter through you whether it's a distraction yeah. Or like a hindrance so it's important that you grow spiritually and you ask God for discernment and wisdom yes, discernment so you know so how important. to deal with yeah. that person's anxiety you know mm -hmm. and like for example <laughs> I have a very demanding job like I'm an entrepreneur I work for myself I'm a co private contractor but even with that you have clients and I have a client that is so anxious so I can recognize the spirit behind her behavior. Mm -hmm. But because there's a hierarchy, like I pay you this, you're supposed to do this. She has an expectation. Um, I don't allow her anxiety to get me out of character, mm -hmm. to cause me anxiety, to anything like that. And oh, I'm getting, that's why God is calling a lot of his Christian and prophetic people into these high positions, into these yes. areas where, um, people are running it that are just like martyrs and that are just trying to control yes. your mind and everything and god is changing the trajectory and he's like no i'm it's sending time. ggs it's rochelle's time. i'm sending people in to change the narrative because that's why we have this whole mental health awareness billboard if you guys notice that it's never been like that yeah and now they're like it's, it's mental it's, health it's no so it's spirits people, it's so many people going through mental issues it's been kids that where our kids are being attacked with all this um um what is it um adhd and all these different um, diseases these different that's diseases not of god it's clearly spirits and as you notice like the kids nowadays um it's taking them a lot longer to start talking now like it's it's an attack on the kids right now and i truly believe that a lot of the anxieties are rooted in the world's expectations mm -hmm. so if you set yourself on focusing on god's expectations the anxieties will flee you'll have peace like she said in the previous in our first podcast video yeah. peace that surpasses all understanding they're going to be like Gigi, how are you so calm yeah. i want my coffee right oh, now right. you know <laughs> like, you got especially like now like, like you got this going on you got that going on how are you so at peace right how and are you like, smiling God. God. right how is your bank account at a negative and you're still smiling how is your car about to get repoed you know, and you're, and you're still, still smiling, smiling. how are you homeless and you're still smiling i remember being very much in the world and i would look at church people and i'd be like how they so happy all the time you know yeah. i never understood that Me and i always said i want to be like that I thought that too. I never <laughs> thought that I would be the type to be wanting to go to church on like a Friday night, like a, a Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, <laughs> like any day of the week. I don't mind going to church. Like right. I never thought that I would be in this place. Right. So I'm just grateful. I'm thankful that God, you know, took me up under his wing. Yes. In a time where I was so lost. Yes. Like. And if that's yeah. what it takes, because. Gigi and I never expected to go to church. We go three days a week right now. Yeah. And it could be more, <laughs> but we had to tell our church, like, bruh, like, God got us doing a lot of stuff. And so I'm like, okay, we got <laughs> we to gotta find balance in right. the church, too. So yeah. it's so important that if you got to go to church more than one day a week to build up that peace, you know, to build up that, to control your anxiety so you can deal with other people's anxieties. No, yes. You know, like, so be it. I was going through, before I had this encounter with God, and that's another, that's, that's a story another for video. another time. <laughs> but <laughs> after I had this encounter with God, I was going through so much at that time. Um, I was really in a dark, depressed state. Mm -hmm. And um, I had an encounter with God, and, like, all I wanted to do was be in his presence mm -hmm. All I wanted to do was read the word. Y'all, I was reading the word sun up, sun down. Yeah, Not she was locked in her prayer locked. closet. She, she was, was like, me and God was, we still like that. my best but friend. Ever since <laughs> then, I'm like, I have, you know, I ain't have no close friends or nothing. I wasn't talking to nobody. It was just me and God yeah. in that season. And I think that's what God wanted. And that may, that may be what God wants for oh, you right so now. Good. 
He wants to, a relationship. He, yes, he wants a relationship, not a religion. He wants a relationship with Sis. you. And you know what I get? And we, we kind of going off, but I think it kind of goes together. Like, I, I used to get, and we were talking about shade, people throwing shade in our last video. I used to get from people that had been in ministry for years that'd be like, well, why did God choose you? Why did God... But you don't know, like Sister Gigi said, looking at her, you might think, oh, she's so young. Mm -hmm. Oh, she, you know, had a single is. mom with a kid. Yeah. But uh, you might not understand why God chose her. But if you hear her testimonies and you hear her pain and you hear her story and her journey, you would see, what did she just say? She spent hours on her knees to God. She had that relationship. She put him first where she was in her closet. She was reading her Bible, I think, for like four days straight. And yeah. I was going to church. I, I was in the world still during that time. I was still in the world, but I was going to church every Sunday, yeah. but still in the world. It wasn't until I took out my time and to have a yeah, personal so relationship with God. Yeah. Um, that's when I truly started to feel the presence of God yeah. and truly start to let the Holy Spirit lead me. That's so good. And our apostle always talks about if you're still sitting in a church for 20 years and you got and elders and deacons same. and it's still the same and there's no miracle signs and wonders and you're in the wrong place. And mm -hmm. it was very hard for me to um, come out to my family and they still don't understand um, with my walk in Christ because I was raised Baptist. There were no miracle signs and wonders. There was no yeah. speaking in tongues. If somebody caught the Holy Ghost in church, they looked at him like that person showing off, you know? So the whole trajectory was different, but that is why God is displeased with churches because they've been mishandling a lot of people. Mm -hmm. And what a lot of um, Christians are doing is seeking therapists when they should be seeking God mm -hmm. because we can vouch and tell you guys that through that relationship is where we received deliverance. Yes. And those I, anxieties I and stuff were gone. I didn't even know what deliverance was until I had Me built neither. a personal relationship. Going to church did not... <laughs> They did not teach me about deliverance. It wasn't until I was on this journey, this walk with yeah. God alone, is when I learned about deliverance and God had called me to That's deliverance. so true. Yeah. My church, I never knew up north. Like, they don't, they're <laughs> they like, just, what? Well, I was like, what? What do you mean? Like, <laughs> casting out demons and stuff. What? <laughs> even to my mom, I'm like, she's like, well, what are your church do different? <laughs> I was like, oh, no, my church is different. Because she's like, you trying to go to church up here? I was like, oh, no. <laughs> like, you know, like, I can go into certain churches and I'm like, oh, God is definitely not here. Like, I got to go. Yeah. This is the devil's playground. I can sense spirits. You know, yes. if I was to get up on the stage at these churches, the pulpit, and start calling out spirits, the whole church would manifest, including the pastor. Okay. So I was like, no, 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 no. But she was like, I was, she's like, what does your church do? I said, we lay hands on people, prophesy, speak in tongues. She goes, you speak in tongues? Like, she, <laughs> they, they, they don't know. And I'm yeah. like, the same people, not saying my mom, but a lot of the same people that can quote scripture and stuff like that. That's all you can do. And that's not where God, that's not the end all for that, you. Just because you can quote scripture doesn't mean that you have a relationship with God. Right. And preaching about the same story over, if you get in the same revelation from the same story each time, then something's out of alignment. Because mm -hmm. I don't know how many times, I, I don't know about you, when I read the story of somebody, uh, in the Bible, I get a different revelation. God will every time. He'll minister to you every, every time. time. Yeah. And sometimes you can be, it's okay to be on, like, I had to, um, God convicted me of this. Like, I don't have to read the Bible, <laughs> the whole Bible in a year. Like, it's okay. That's so It's okay to focus on, like, one, um, Let him one chapter. For, even if it takes you weeks or months on that one chapter that he has you on, it's Ooh. okay. And you know what? For anybody out there that's telling people, you got to read your whole Bible in order to be like church person and all this stuff like that. The devil is a liar yeah. because what a lot of church people are doing in the modern day church is they're reading the Bible, but people aren't receiving anything from it. They're not meditating on the word. They're going on Sunday to get a word, but they're not applying it to their lives. Yeah. They're not doing the they work. They're just getting bits and pieces. And that's how so many people are deceived, deceived. in the church because they don't know the word. They don't know. Um, so whatever this motivational preacher <laughs> is saying to them. That's another episode, yeah, by the way. Whatever they're saying to them, they just like, yes, yes. And because it sounds good, but it's not. It's Woo! Not sounds good. 
It sounds good. My God. So I would say like the positives of taking on people's anxieties, the positive, I believe it's most effective when you're rooted in Christ and you're yeah. delivered yourself or you're on the way of deliverance to the point where you have a kind of peace. Yeah, you have that peace and you're ready. And you can you're recognize. You're ready for God to lead you to, to, um, to help heal, heal those, them. Help heal those people how he healed you. Right. So that, that could be somebody's calling. In a negative way, I feel like most people take on other people's anxieties and it, it, it gets, that spirit jumps on them when they're not fully healed and delivered through Christ. And they're like, oh my gosh, I can't sleep. I got a headache or, oh, you know, yeah. you, you know, I don't know if you yeah. have friends that be like, I got in a fight with my boyfriend and he was just doing this and they're just still dwelling on the problem. And I'm like, okay, that was yesterday's news. Like today's a yeah. new day. Yeah. Like, why is that bothering you? Right. The enemy that you just allowed the enemy to creep in because you're still going on and on and on and on about that problem. Yeah. Because if you're not ready, <laughs> yes. if you're not ready to um, to hear all that, like especially if you're already going through something yourself, and God hasn't delivered you from whatever season you're you're in, and yes. then you you have someone constantly in your ear like talking negative about their life, their issues, and and all of that, then you know it's time to step away. It's time to step away from that person right. because their issues will weigh you down, weigh you down, and be and then you start to thinking about all the stuff that you got going on. You like, dang, I gotta pay this. I got I to do that. How I'm going to do this? How I'm going to get this mm -hmm. together? It's the spirit just, of heaviness. Yeah. Yeah. And you know what? Now I understand. Like, when I started my walk, like, my um, spiritual father would prophesy over me, like, you're going to be um, a life, a coach. And then I remember Nina Morris. Um, you guys know her, Bold for, Bold for Christ on YouTube. Um, I did some sessions with her early on, and she was like, God's going to call you to coach. I said, no, he ain't. I ain't coaching nobody. But... The reason they were prophesying that then is because they could see the future that God had for me. Mm -hmm. So back then, of course, my saying no was I wasn't ready then. But now that I have this peace where I understand where a person is coming from, I can I know how to de to recognize the root and to knock that root down or you know dismantle yeah. that and get to the core of the problem and help them receive deliverance through it because mm -hmm. coaching is deliverance. Yeah. You know, That's true. I remember my sister saying, oh, so you going to coach people and you don't got no license. I was like, verified by God. Yeah. You know, that's another thing. That, you know, okay, we got our license through God. OK, <laughs> you'll be surprised how many people, not just us, but you can heal because you have the light, because you have the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. You have something that they don't have. And a lot of therapists and pastors don't have. And so when you're called to deliverance deliver people think first of all people think deliverance is just by laying hands and no, it's not it's more than that healing can come in all different forms it could come through therapy it could come through nurturing it could come through a lot of different things so i don't technically have to lay hands on you in order to deliver you from an area yeah. in your life that you need to be delivered or it could just be your testimony right I remember one time this young girl that I met through her mom because she was a part of the core club and I was a part of the core club. She led me to the core club and she's like, you need to hear my daughter's testimony. And her, as her daughter started to describe to me, and she was young, so I was like, God got her early. She was speaking in tongues. She was like really mm -hmm. on fire for God. The minute she started telling me her testimony, I started crying. Mm -hmm. I was bawling. And I didn't understand why, but her testimony reminded me of my younger self. She was talking about how guys tried to take advantage of her and things like that. And what she went through with her mom, you know, being a stripper and her having to take care of her siblings and all, all this stuff. Yeah. And I was just received deliverance because I said, wow. And sometimes the step to deliverance is recognizing the area that that person is not fully healed in, the, the, the area mm -hmm. of their life that still is a trigger yeah. for them. And I was triggered. I was like, oh my goodness, God, this was my story. Like, yeah. not the whole story, but, but when you can relate, relate to, to that story. And what did you say about testimonies? Um... We were saying this the other night. I forget. You were like, testimonies are the activation of faith or something like that. Uh, 
we forget, but we don't. Know. God is the God of bringing it back. Y'all remember that because I'm gonna come out with a T-shirt. God is the God of bringing it back. Um, so yeah, I think there are pros and cons and ways to recognize whether a person's anxiety is an open door for the enemy to get into your life or a witness. Yes, but y'all, you gotta know how to set boundaries, okay? That's so good. Set boundaries. That's so good. <laughs> Sometimes you are the light. That the that someone else needs, but yes, but they could take advantage of that. Yeah, especially the gossipers. Right. When Just someone like, comes yeah. to gossip, I'll be like, ah, 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 ah. I'll be like, Lord, <laughs> no, I, mm. all right, I'm gonna talk to you later. Right. The warriors. Ah, 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 ah. The devil is a liar. Okay. Worry does not is not your portion. It does not live okay. here. Because I'm telling you, I'll be like, you know what? You got a car right now. You got your home. Listen. You to eat. Yes. Like, you I'm have like, to start speaking look, life okay. over what's living. D don't start dwelling on what's dead in your life. You've given you know? too much power to the enemy. Giving too glory. much power. We gotta do an episode on how to wreck it, how people should understand overcoming worry, or, uh, overcoming worry, but understanding the power and authority we, ha authority we have. Yeah, that's what Apostle's been talking yes. about. We have the authority, and people don't recognize. They're like, "Oh, I can't, I can't do it. I I'm not capable. I'm not good enough." And the devil is a liar again. He's sowing seeds of doubt, yes. and it's not true. Yes. So I yes. like how Gigi did that. She started. You see, the minute like if I'm like, "Oh, Gigi, I don't have any money. I, you know, I've been single for so long. You know, my kids are stressing me out." She was like, "Uh, uh, you have this. You have this. Yeah. Words are power." So she immediately, it's so powerful, yeah. right? She immediately started taking what the devil was um, implanting in my mind, and she started speaking over what God was telling her that, okay. yeah, yes. If you start to, you know, start thinking about all that worry, just think about what God told you. Yes. Write down what God is telling you, and whenever you get to worry, start reading it. Because really God is not a liar. You might not see the promise manifesting your life right now, but best but believe. Basically, God is coming with your promise. Buzzer blessings are coming. Mm -hmm. He's going to do it when you least expect it. And yeah. you know when he's going to do it? He's testing your faith. He's going to be like, yes. okay. Stay faithful. Bring it up a little bit more. I'm seeing a temperature right now. Uh, you know, one of them temperature things in the spirit mm -hmm. where it rises. Like, you know, with yeah. the red. I'm seeing that right now. And God is saying, I need you to raise your faith up a little bit more before I release this yes. next blessing to you. I'm seeing the temperature that's, right now. Yes, and that could be hindering a lot of people. Your faith. Where is your faith? Yes, where does your faith lie? Are you giving... Are you, is your faith with the devil? Cause that, that's, I was about to say the same. Because <laughs> that's where, what worry is. Yes. to the devil. Yes. Like, I know people that would be like, oh, my, I just have too much anxiety. Why do you have anxiety? You got to ask yourself, why am I feeling this way? Mm -hmm. Did God tell you to do something and the enemy is trying to use something else to, to make sure you don't do it? Because yeah. he did that. He tried it with me this morning. Gigi, I was like, should we do the podcast tomorrow? Right. Like, I don't know knowing darn know well, I knew what God I mean, said. God told us to just start now. <laughs> he like, told me in so many ways. That. Don't worry about what we look like. Don't worry about yeah. any of that. Just do it. God is so faithful. God is good. If he didn't deliver so us, strategic. what would you be doing if he didn't deliver you? <laughs> I'll still be like, look, I'll still be crying. A I'll hot be, mess. I be, yeah, like, I didn't even know, like, when I was still in the world, I didn't know uh, what my what my purpose was. I didn't know, yeah. like, I didn't feel fulfilled. I was looking to drinking and partying you were and settling. all that stuff. Like, yeah, to fulfill me. <coughs> but it was all temporary. It was right. all temporary. But God is everlasting. God is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Mm -hmm. So God is good. God really blessed me. And he's, you know, uprooted me in a time where I was in so much disobedience. So I'm grateful. I'm grateful for his mercy. <coughs> when I was in the world, I was thinking that the only way to get money and true wealth was to work yourself to death. Yep. I was thinking the only yes. way to be successful was to go get a college degree. Yeah. And I was thinking the only way to get the man of my dreams was to dress a certain way and to mm -hmm. act a certain way. Yep. And to be what you guys would call a bad B. You know? Yep. Um, the whole trajectory changed. I was thinking that if I had attention that I would get I would gain the world by showing people parts of me that were, you know, not of God. Like I was dressing in a different way. I was, 
acting in a different way in the clubs and things like that, just to be accepted. Yeah. And, you know, God will allow you to go through that for a little while, but you only achieve a certain level, yes. you know? It's not, you'll feel, you know, a little bit, but it's not, it's, it's not fulfilling. It's, it's not, not fulfilling. Like when I look at my life now, I'm like, yeah, y'all gonna be like, oh, so you just a Christian now, you know? And I'm like, okay. I am happier you know, than I've ever been. I told one of my best friends <laughs> that, like, about my life journey and, you know, how I'm, you know, living my life for God now. I'm not dressing a certain <laughs> way or revealing clothes and stuff anymore. And she was like, so what, you a nun now? <laughs> oh, my goodness. Yes, I've been hearing the nun and thing, so like, you should just be a nun. What? Because, like, listen, <laughs> if it involves being a nun for God, then I'm there. You know what I'm saying? And the Christian life can be a fun life. It, it can. Like, yeah. you don't have to be drinking. You don't have to go to the club. There's other ways to have fun in there. Listen, we have fun all the time, trust we'll me. Be cracking up. But we do have some scripture on this topic and we will elaborate on what. So the first one we had was Galatians 5.16. This is the ESV version. Um, but I say, walk by the spirit and you will not gratify the desires of the flesh. Mm. So what I interpreted from that is if someone is anxious and they're around you and their anxieties, you know, make sure you stay in the spirit. Yeah. That way you're able to handle the problem better. Because if you react in the flesh, like with worry and all that stuff like that, then you're out of alignment with God. That's so true. And y'all, you know what I learned um, about how to, you know, kill the flesh and stay in the spirit is by reading the word. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, I know it's, you know, it's easier say, said than done. Say this, but it's so true. Like, like you're literally when you read the word, you're literally feeding Ooh, your spirit. Yes. You know how you eat food. Mm -hmm. That's what you do with your spirit when you read the word. That's also the recipe, the good recipe to fasting. And people, be, I know, I know people be like to you, "How you fast? How you go days without eating?" Literally, the yeah, uh, the Bible is food for your soul, like with yes. your spirit. Yes. And we have one more scripture, Ephesians 6, 12. For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this age, against spiritual hosts of wickedness in the heavenly places. So good. So good. Yeah. I always say that to people because on my Facebook and stuff like that, people be trying to pick an argument. Like they think I'm a lawyer or something where I'm just going to debate and go back and forth. I don't got time for that. So I'll be like, for the fight is not, you know, between yes. flesh and blood. And like, be I'm not going to argue say, with you. Yeah, people be trying to say, oh, it's not that deep. But it do be that it's deep. Always <laughs> deep. It it's always deep. I saw a video somebody did about that. She's like, it's always deep. Mm -hmm. But I'm, I always say the last thing I'm going to do is argue with you because I know what my God said. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. I'm going to stand 10 toes down on that. Okay? Period. Period. Yeah. Do we have any homework for them today about anxieties? Like, what should they do? Okay. Um, Exercise the, the tools that we just told you in this yeah, video. Yeah, scriptures we told you. and Meditate um, on those. Yeah, meditate on that. Um, also read about the book of with Lot. The, and, story, uh, of Lot the story of and Lot and his wife. She was very anxious. Very, very anxious. Read how that turned out. Okay. And mm -hmm. why when God pull you out of a situation, pull you out of friendships, out of family situations. Yes, don't turn back. You'll be, if you go back, you'll be worse off than, you know, than before. So. And, and I'm getting like, we are called to be the salt of the earth, but she turned into a pillar of salt. If you're a pillar of salt, you're at a standstill. You're stuck. Mm -hmm. You can't go nowhere. Yeah. You can't change nothing. You can't do nothing. Yeah. Yeah. So that's like, don't go back because if you go back, you'll be turned to stone like her. And we're not supposed, we're supposed to be sprinkled everywhere, yeah. you know? So... Well, yeah. you guys, we love y'all. I love yeah. this. I love this. I'm Healing so and deliverance yeah. to the live. Okay, you guys, in the description, we'll put all of the the groups and the things that we're doing. We'll make sure we yeah. try to stay on top of that. There's so many things that we're doing, but please stay connected and locked in. And if this is blessed to you, please be a blessing to someone else by sharing this with them. Yes. Right? Please don't forget to like and subscribe. Yes, don't forget to do that. <laughs> Because then, you know what it does? It's not about, like, 
we're not here for the money. We're not here for the clout or the recognition yes. because we are verified by God. Yeah, yeah. So we don't need that. We but it, yeah, that this just bless you. What it does, yeah. yeah, it puts us ahead of all the other irrelevant videos out there on the web, on on YouTube. Mm -hmm. So what this says is, you know what? People like hearing about yeah. this stuff. You know, Jesus is the forefront. He, he's the forerunner. He's the center. That's, a, that's why it's so many of us. God is pushing his people yes. up front in this hour because it's been drowned out by so many yes. um, false teachings. So God is putting his people up front. So, yes, but that's what liking and subscribing mm -hmm. is so important yes. because it pushes away those other videos, yes, those worldly word. things, mm -hmm. and it puts God at the forefront. Yes. You know? All right, well, we love y'all. Until Thank next you. time. Bye. Be blessed.